I would start by giving you a background and saying that in 1912 is when we first recorded the index case of rabies in Kenya. So rabies is uh, more than 100 years old in Kenya. It's not a new thing. And uh, most of these cases, if you look at them and you want to trace where they come from, they have all, almost all of them, almost 100% are associated with dogs. So very, very minimal linkage to wildlife and other species. So if we tackle the problem at the dog level, we are going to be able to have dealt with the, the rabies menace. And remember, rabies, as we all know, is almost 100% fatal. Whatever you show the signs, we are, very, we are almost sure that we are going to be losing a human life from the rabies. So it is also estimated that in Kenya alone, we have almost more than 1,000 human deaths due to rabies annually. And some of these things are not recorded. And the reason why they are not recorded is because surveillance system, again, in developing countries is not very, very strong as compared to developed countries. Some of our areas are remote to an extent that they are not accessible for surveillance and therefore some information goes unrecorded. And that's why we say we need to look at this with that in mind and know that the burden could be actually more than is documented. And it has been uh, ranked as a top five priority disease by the country, both because of the kind of uh, burden it causes to human, uh, to human uh, population, because we have recorded a number of deaths in this country due to the rabies, and also a lot of uh, suffering when it comes to the animals. So it is going to be a very key zoonotic disease for us to think about, and that is why the government decided to do and to rank it as one of the priority diseases, so that it receives the priority. If you look at that map, it has some red parts, and those parts, for a whole year, we do not know about their disease status. This is just to demonstrate to you that when we say cases are the reported, it is truly, it cannot give you a very true reflection. So if all those red parts, we don't have any information, it does not mean it is free from rabies. It means it could be there and not re reported. It also means it could be absent, but we don't know. So we have some limitations in terms of being able to cover the whole country. So the true disease burden, as I'm telling you, is masked by the surveillance system. So as we continue looking at this, it is also important to strengthen our surveillance system. And then um, it has also been proven that sustained vaccinations, whereby you are able to meet at least 70% of the dog population can be able to reduce drastically the burden in the population. And the reason why we want to emphasize on this is because like this year's old rabies uh, day theme is around the vaccination. So the vaccination is being given a lot of priority so that we can be able to tackle this problem. However, when we talk of 70% of the dog population, it presents to us another challenge. Another challenge of, do we have the figures of dogs? In, 20, in 2009, Kenya conducted a census for all the human beings in Kenya and a number of animals. However, we did not count the dogs and cats. We have repeated the same mistake a month ago, and we have counted the animals again, and we have left them the dogs and cats. So what we are doing currently, we are, we are trying to conduct ecological studies to try and estimate the numbers of dogs in this country, which tells you the 70% is still not very certain. We are still not certain that we are hitting the 70%. And that, again, poses a challenge. And the, ch the scenario you are seeing here mimics a lot of other African countries. And now that I told you we lead and others follow, it tells you the situation could be worse in the other countries. So it is important for us to use this as our case situation 
and know that the figures of dogs needs to be a priority when it comes to us being able to address this problem. And when we are talking of humane dog population management, you need to know you are controlling the population of dogs from where to where. What do you want to achieve? So you need to be very clear with that again. One of our dairies, and I can, I'm happy to see some members of the fourth estate here, they reported and said man's best friend, and they said not here. We all have a lot of passion, and that's why we are here for the dog. But according to the, to the scenario at that time, the people in that particular region, having their voice being echoed by the media, were not very certain that this is their real best friend. Because the dog is biting indiscriminately, transmitting rabies, and we are losing lives. And that is why they are asking man's best friend not here. This was in August 2016 in a county called Kisi, where we have been losing. And they go on and tell us below there that these, they are reported about more than 30 cases of rabies, human rabies, in human population in Kisi County alone. So that tells you that is one county alone and we have 47 counties. So what is happening in the other counties? Okay. So the dog population, if you look at it, the actual numbers are not known as I have told you. And before we outload the use of strychnine, I'm sure all of us are not using strychnine in their own countries, although that is an assumption. Um, before we outload, we used to use this chemical poisoning of dogs and we came to realize through the animal welfare bodies and uh, all of us were in agreement that this is very inhumane way of managing the dog population. Ella will bear me witness that just when we were organizing this conference, we received, she even got the letter before me circulating in social media that one of our counties had planned to use the strychnine on some population of dogs, but we had to prevail on the circumstance so that tells you alone that as much as we've banned the strychnine, there's still pressure for us to get alternatives and effective alternatives that suits our situation to be able to control the population of dogs. And that's why I normally say at this point, this conference then becomes very timely. When our population is struggling to be able to identify an alternative, effective, means to be able to deal with this. So this is something I would want us to challenge ourselves as we do this presentation, the, the oncoming presentations. And then uh, what Kenya is doing currently, and I'm sure most other countries, is to try and do a lot of campaigns on responsible dog ownership. Because we all know that the recent cases of roaming dogs that was seen when we stopped using the chemical poisoning also exposes our, the population of dogs to very uncontrolled breedings. And sometimes, because again, the developing countries, you have some people who are struggling to feed themselves. So you can imagine if the dogs are also multiplying, they will not focus on feeding the dogs. They will focus on feeding the human beings even before they start asking themselves whether the dogs have something to eat or not. So what that, hap what that does, it sets all the dogs whether owned or unknown to the slaughterhouses, outside hotels, and we have a lot of populations of street dogs, but they're actually owned by people. And that is what is really complicating the control and eradication of rabies. So this is now my point here is to really encourage us to have a lot of discussion with regard to how can we have a labor uh, intensive uh, management strategies, something that is very uh, applicable, something that is very easy to apply in our environment so that we can have that discussion and see. For instance, we are doing spare and new time some campaigns with partners like TNR Trust 
and other organizations like World Animal Protection, and of course, many other uh, partners. As much as we are doing that, if you look at that technique itself, it requires a lot of technical capacity, and some, as some researchers are even saying and documenting, how much have we been able to reduce the population using these techniques? And there's a big discussion about that, and we need, therefore, to say, we need to really critique that and see how easy that can be done to be able to have a meaningful impact. Then uh, we have uh, to bear in mind that strategies like uh, trapping the dogs, castrating them or neutering them and releasing them can work here, but you take them probably to Kisi and fails to work because cultural practices are different. People's belief about control of dogs are different. And the way they perceive when they, want, when they see you want to reduce the dog population using a certain means, they perceive it differently. So I want us to be aware that different scenarios will call for different strategies to be able to manage dog population control. I'm sure that uh, we are going to have a lot of deliberations as we continue making these presentations. And I want to welcome us to be very open to that so that after this conference is done, we can be able to document very workable recommendations to our government and to many other. And as you can see, we have the government with us, and we are going to be having a lot of discussion about that. Thank you so much, and that's the end of my keynote.